Netflix is going to go bankrupt at their current rate. That's a wild sentence to say out loud. Remember 2014? They were unstoppable. Netflix. 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 Netflix leads the pack. Orange, Orange is, is the, the new black. black. Netflix was the cool, cutting-edge company. You wanted to be the Netflix of whatever industry you were in. But now they're struggling to retain relevance and going through desperate measures to turn profitable. What happened? How did a company with so much promise lose its power in a mere few years? The golden child of tech is now desperate to stay alive. The company was on a rocket ship since their origins in 1997. Reed Hastings was hit with a $40 late fee for returning a movie late to Blockbuster. He was furious. But after all, that was Blockbuster's business model. Charge frustrated customers an arm and a leg for returning their copy of Braveheart one week late. If you wanted to rent movies, you had to play by the stupid rules. The movie rental industry was broken. This rental incident sparked inspiration for Reed, who teamed up with Mark Randolph to form Netflix, a way for customers to get DVDs, remember those, shipped directly to their doorstep. The pair were inspired by a little company called Amazon, which had just proven this model successfully with book deliveries. Go online and make a list of the movies you want from over 70,000 titles and get your first DVDs in the mail in about one business day. The Netflix model worked, and it worked fast. Movie lovers didn't mind spending $19 a month for no late fees and unlimited rentals. Their quick success led to Netflix expanding their teams and building up a roster of thousands of movies to choose from. Still, the larger industry didn't see them as a threat. A mere few years after launching, Netflix told Blockbuster they'd sell for $50 million, which Blockbuster laughed off. But we know what happened next. And today, with quarterly revenues of $21 million, Netflix Incorporated went public at an $82.5 million valuation. By the early 2000s, both Blockbuster and Walmart realized they were morons. Netflix was what consumers wanted, and the Netflix model was the future. Both companies tried competitive services that ultimately failed. As Netflix continued their rise to glory, they had a new thought around 2007. Why don't we utilize high-speed internet to offer more titles to our customers? That's when Netflix 2.0, the Netflix you know now, came into the fold. Choose from thousands of movies and TV episodes streamed instantly right to your TV. Watch as many as you want, whenever you want. Their 2007 service, Watch Now, featured 5,000 titles for you to stream on your computer or at-home device. This was meant as a sweet little add-on for the Netflix DVD subscribers. They absolutely never expected this to surpass their DVD business. But history happened. Yeah, you definitely see uh, you know, the larger TV go out with the internet TV function so that right from your remote control, you can get onto Netflix and you can watch a movie uh, without ever even touching your computer. By 2010, Netflix had formed partnerships to allow for their streaming business to be available on Xbox, PlayStation, TiVos, Roku's, Apple devices, and more. This is where you probably became familiar with Netflix, and this is when the business began going bonkers. 2010's revenue and activity was 99% in streaming. Naturally, they shifted into a streaming platform first and a DVD rental service second. Of course, this meant changing prices. While in 2010 they charged $10 a month for full streaming capabilities plus one DVD rental, by 2011 they charged $8 a month for DVD rentals, $8 a month for streaming. Streaming was becoming its own standalone service. The way we think about it, as you asked about Netflix, it's subscription video on demand. Guess what? Consumers were okay with the price change. You know why? Because the product was still incredible relative to the price. Remember that for later. In 2008, they had 9 million subscribers. By 2010, they had 20 million subscribers. They were everything the consumer wanted and more. By the early 2010s, Blockbuster was on their deathbed. Netflix had annihilated all competition and all but owned the industry. Online media viewing is one thing that helped push Blockbuster into bankruptcy. Now, Dish Network yesterday gave Blockbuster a lifeline with its proposed $320 million bid to acquire the chain. But still, they didn't stop. 2013 and 2014 saw a new disruption by the company. 
original programming. Shows like House of Cards and Orange is the New Black quickly became the most critically acclaimed and viewer-loved shows within all of media. It was unheard of to receive this caliber of show through a streaming service, but Netflix made it possible. They were unstoppable, the coolest, most beloved brand that had disrupted both movie rentals and cable television. But their decline was right around the corner as competition came into the fold. And this competition? Seriously fierce. Disney, Paramount, Discovery, HBO, Big Tech got its act together in the late 2010s. The media giants were not going to sit by and let themselves be steamrolled by Netflix. No, they were going to try their hand at Netflix's disruptive model. And it worked. Disney Plus had The Mandalorian, HBO Max had The Undoing, quality content was everywhere and it was affordable. All the while, Netflix started to lose their knack for brilliant execution. They began a strategy of greenlighting as many shows and movies as possible without a care for their quality. It's like the whole company is run by people without a brain. It's just an algorithm that's malfunctioning right now. So they're just taking random properties and adapting them into bad shows. This was a bad strategy. Original programming is what made Netflix the coolest brand in the world. A Netflix original meant quality content. But after allowing so many garbage programs onto the platform, Netflix original suddenly meant nothing. Worst of all, their mismanagement led to a number of shows with cult followings being prematurely cancelled. The customer began to feel frustrated with the once beloved company. This should have been their wake-up call, but it wasn't. Global events that caused everybody to stay inside led to more people than ever needing entertainment. So, on the surface, Netflix kept doing decently well. But guess what else started happening? Consumers started experimenting with the new streaming services. Quickly, users realized that there was better content out there at more affordable prices. That's why, in April of 2022, Netflix made a shocking announcement. Not only had they not gained new subscribers, they had actually lost 200,000 subscribers. As a result, their stock plummeted by over 70% from their peak. This was the first time in a decade that they had lost more subscribers than they had earned. They pulled out every excuse in the book. They said it was because of password sharing, pulling out of Russia and people going back to work. But their competitors faced the same global conflicts and they didn't face anywhere near the issues Netflix faced. This is when the world's worst damage control kicked in. First, ask yourself, what would you do if people found your service too expensive and lacking in quality? Well, you certainly would not have raised prices up to nearly $16 a month, making you the most expensive streaming service. Unbelievably, that was what Netflix did. They continually increased prices, all while greenlighting shows and movies that became widely panned. This is because Netflix is desperate. The competition is good. HBO Max earned the premiere branding that Netflix held in 2014. Now, HBO Max is the cool streaming disruptor. The fact is, people now don't need Netflix like they once did. And their years of mismanagement means the company is bleeding capital and badly needs cash. Just last week, the company announced that they were cracking down on password sharing, something they used to be okay with. If you're using someone else's password to watch Netflix, your account has already been canceled or could be very soon. It makes sense on the surface. Over 100 million households share passwords, but this goes against the cool, friend of the consumer brand they had cemented years prior. If that's not enough, they're now working on a cheaper Netflix that is supported by ads. They're becoming no better than the cable model that they were always meant to rail against. It's insane to think about, isn't it? This company disrupted two different industries, movie rentals and cable television. But now they've lost their values and are rapidly declining. Unfortunately for Netflix, there's nobody to blame but themselves.